Okay, let's talk about aliens. Okay, maybe not really aliens. Let's talk about SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. And specifically, several major studies in the last few months that were able to conduct the most comprehensive search for a lot of different signals focusing on different parts of the universe in order to find any signal out there. With a lot of this excitement very likely spearheaded by one of the discoveries from a few years ago when the scientists accidentally discovered a potential extraterrestrial signal from nearby Proxima Centauri. Although since then the so-called BLC-1 or Breakthrough Listen Candidate 1 has been discovered to be potentially an Earth-based interference and not extraterrestrial. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But since then, in the last few months, there have been quite a few additional studies trying different techniques and trying to focus on something slightly different, searching for something anywhere. And so let's discuss each of these in detail and find out if there was anything discovered so far. And by the way, one of the previous studies we've discussed did actually find 8 potential candidates, which turned out to be most likely once again, nothing really special. So far after months of confirmations, no additional signal was discovered from those locations and so at least for now those candidates are still candidates. But in the last year or so, Breakthrough Listen project has expanded to look at a lot of different things. It looked at very dense concentration of stars inside our own galaxy, it also observed the galactic disk, it looked for various long signals and also super short signals and even observed some of the nearest galaxies close to us. And one of these big investigations was known as BLIPS. Breakthrough Listen investigation for periodic spectral signals, specifically focusing on the center of the Milky Way, which we know has the highest concentration of stars and thus, maybe, the highest concentration of potential alien signals. Here they focused on frequencies of 4 to 8 gigahertz and the reasoning behind this was actually pretty solid. It's not even that we are actually trying to find civilizations living there, but there is an expectation that anyone out there trying to talk to someone else would probably strategically place some kind of a beacon right in the center of the galaxy because that's where most people, or I guess most aliens, are going to be searching. And though previously most of the search was conducted using continuous signals, this study mostly focused on using various pulses, because that's probably the most efficient way to communicate over long distances. And this was the first ever comprehensive search of these bursty signals anywhere in a galaxy. Just like with previous similar studies, it used the National Science Foundation's Green Bank Telescope, one of the most powerful such telescopes on the planet. And this telescope generally detects things like pulsars really easily. But unlike a pulsar, which can actually emit signals in a lot of different frequencies, here the scientists focused on very narrow range. The one that's extremely efficient for radio transmission, 4 to 8 gigahertz. And after looking at approximately 600,000 stars in the galactic center, they produced an extremely significant non-detection. Nothing was found, but it was not found with a lot of significance. And so at least for now, right in the middle of the galaxy, no one seems to be communicating with anyone. But the second study decided to focus on something a little bit more intriguing. They reason slightly differently. What if we already have a lot of detections in some of the older data, not of aliens trying to communicate, but aliens trying to build something around stars? For example, some kind of an unusual structure or even artificial planet. So maybe some kind of a strangely shaped object such as a colony, a star base, a humongous spaceship, just kind of orbiting around the star. And using this reasoning, they actually realized that we can actually look at older data from for example Kepler telescope that's collected data for thousands of different transits, many of which have been detected over and over and over again, allowing us to see if this was actually a planet or something with a potentially stranger shape. And so here the scientists focused on these anomalous transits by looking at deviations from a typical light curve where there's a noticeable dip when something passes in front of a star. And so for example if there's a deviation based on change in speed or strange observations based on unusual shapes, or even a transit that disappears completely, it was automatically reported to be anomalous, with the specific focus being on anomalies that could not be physically explained otherwise. And though there have been actually several detections that didn't make sense at first, specifically 228 anomalous signals, most ended up being resolved with time. For example, some transits seemed to be missing, some were much deeper on a second pass than the first pass, and some had a slight variation in timing. But a lot of these turned out to be pretty much nothing. It was either because of another planet somewhere out there, or even potentially a moon around the planet, with most of them turning out to be regular planets. But a few of these signals did actually turn out to be somewhat strange. Here's one, Kepler 548b. Here this was transit number 132 and it was somewhat difficult to explain at first. 
but it was explainable once you modify the software a little bit because it turned out to be some kind of a software glitch. Which unfortunately was the case for a lot of other anomalies as well. Once they changed the search algorithm, everything looked normal once again. And so once again, there seems to be nothing. But in this case, this is also a relatively small sample. Just over 5000 exoplanets. We obviously might have a lot more once the test mission is finished, but out of Kepler, this is all we get. No aliens, no unusual shapes. And the last and the most recent study focused on various galaxies close to us. Specifically 97 nearby galaxies focusing on much stronger signals potentially coming from some kind of a type 2 civilization that's able to produce extremely powerful signals traveling across the entire galaxy and traveling into other galaxies as well. And so far this is the largest search conducted to date that in a nutshell looked at trillions and trillions of stars out there. Focusing on typical radio frequencies between 1.1 to 2.7 gigahertz and 4 to 11 gigahertz as well. And here this was done by breaking these galaxies into smaller segments and then focusing on individual segments to see if there's anything there. This is an example of M31 or the Andromeda galaxy. Here each target was observed in various frequencies focused on what's known as frequency drift. Basically indicating some kind of a motion either motion toward us or away from us. Here's how some of this drift would appear in some of the data. And even though initially there were 1500 candidate signals, there was no evidence that any of this was Techno signatures. And so none of them were coming from any advanced civilizations living in those galaxies. Although in this case it's also important to realize that they were only looking at powerful signals. Signals producing something like 10 to the power of 26 watts of power, in some sense similar to what our sun produces as well. And so this is something that maybe only type 2 civilization could produce in order to communicate with everyone in the universe. Implying that no such civilization seems to be located in any of these galaxies for now. But here it's also the analysis, the research and of course the technique used that's also kind of important for a lot of future research that's going to be trying to find the same. And so three separate techniques three separate studies focusing on three different ideas in order to discover someone out there, but nothing found once again. Now obviously a lot of these limitations are also because we're looking at a relatively tiny sample, but the important part here is that the techniques and technology and of course the way everything is analyzed is constantly being improved and so in some sense SETI researchers are definitely getting better and better and better. But as of the end of 2023, based on all of the recent analysis, recent research and recent observations, there does not seem to be anyone out there trying to talk to anyone else. No extraterrestrial intelligence that wants to be noticed. But maybe there are some that don't want to be noticed, or maybe there are some that are just very very different. And you can learn about some of these concepts in some of the videos in the description. Anyway on that note, thank you for watching, check out all of the studies and the links in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, Support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying a wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.